As this is Legacy Night, is a time to reflect on the great people that came before us. This past year, we lost many greats from our wild sheep family. One of the great conservationists of our times set his last sheep camp. A fellow Canadian, a fellow British Columbian, and a fellow Vancouver Islander, Dr. Valerius Geist was a giant in our conservation community. I recall the email from Shane Mahoney the morning Val passed away, paying tribute to a legend and a man that will be spoken about long after we have all gone. I want to welcome to the stage another fellow Canadian, Mr. Shane Mahoney, as we remember and pay tribute to Dr. Valerius Geist. Ladies and gentlemen, the man I'm about to honor is unquestionably one of the most influential conservationists of all time. And if any of you are enjoying this evening, if any of you came here for the purpose of celebrating wildlife and celebrating the role that hunters and anglers have played in the conservation of wildlife in Canada and the United States and around the world, then I think you ought to know just a little bit more about this man and what he gave to you, each and every one of you, sitting at every single one of these tables, no matter how far from this podium you are. It was on the 7th of July of this year that I received a phone call from Harold Geist telling me that his father, Dr. Valerius Geist, had died. He died following a second operation to reroute veins in his legs, which the doctors told him was almost certainly going to fail, but that the only alternative was to have his leg amputated. Being the man he was, it is completely unsurprising to every single one of us who knew him that he said, absolutely not. I will not have my leg taken. I want you to repeat this risky and dangerous operation so that I can return to the land where I raise my chickens, where I hunt my deer, and where my wife and my family have enjoyed such extraordinary times. This, this is the mark of a man with courage. This is the mark of a man who had courage in every single aspect of his life. There are in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, very few rare things. But Valerius Geist was a very, very rare man indeed. He left a legacy of some 23 books, 150 published peer-reviewed scientific papers, 50 submissions to major encyclopedias, and of course, 130 popular articles because he believed in speaking to the average person. He is also the individual who coined the term the North American model. And if there is anyone in this room who has never heard the term the North American model, then I'm afraid you're a little bit out of step with the history, the legacy, the future, and the opportunities for hunting in Canada and the United States. Every single conversation with this man, whose intellect was beyond any I have ever encountered, brought something rare and insightful in a way that was almost difficult to believe. Every single conversation was the same. There was always something profound, something different, something that would stir your imagination and make you think about things in ways that you had never thought about them before. He was a giant in the conservation community and only perhaps in recent time, E.O. Wilson, the famous Harvard ecologist who also died this year, could sort of stand shoulder to shoulder with him. He scattered seeds or ideas like seeds. We picked them up, you picked them up, and we planted them. But Valerius Geist already knew what they would grow into. And the number of ideas and advances he gave us puts him in a singular category. He was a Renaissance man. The breadth of his knowledge extended far beyond conservation and wildlife. 
And he was a philosopher at heart and an artist. And he brought all of those qualities to bear on whatever he did, whether it was winemaking or whether it was raising his chickens or his rabbits or his geese. Every endeavor in his life was built and fueled at abs absolutely top speed. He was born in the Ukraine. Most people don't know that. He came from the Ukraine, migrated to Austria, and eventually to Canada. And of course, what you all probably do know is he did his PhD research at the University of British Columbia on mountain sheep. His book that he published 50 years ago on that species stands today still as the Bible of knowledge on that particular animal, and it will unlikely be surpassed. Fifty years, ladies and gentlemen, is a long time for a body of knowledge to stand the scrutiny of dozens and hundreds and hundreds of scientists looking at his ideas, exploring them, testing them to see if they in fact were true. And to this day, if you are a student of wild sheep and you have not read Val Geist's book, then you must be taking your degree on some other planet, because that could be the only explanation for it. But beyond this, of course, he was an innovator in many other ways. He created the first faculty of environmental design, the first time that people thought about bringing different kinds of ideas to bear. And he did that until he retired from the University of Calgary. But perhaps most telling for all of us here was in the face of great criticism and threat to the North American system of conservation, Valerius Geist coined the term the North American model of wildlife conservation and gave to each of us, to every state agency, to every NGO, to every individual who thinks seriously about the future of wildlife and the future of conservation, he gave us the framework by which we could share our discussions and our views, our hopes and our aspirations. He was the one who set the standards by which we could finally understand exactly what the hunter conservationist movement of Canada and the United States had achieved. He was a family man. He loved his children dearly. And his wife, Renata Geist, was beyond question the most important other human being on the planet. And if Geist's mind was this wide, then Renata's mind was this deep. And having conversations around their kitchen table with the two of them was one of the most enriching and extraordinary experiences of my life. I loved her as I loved him. And they had a profound influence on me. But beyond the scientist and the courageous practitioner for conservation, Geist was a man who was fascinated with animals and who loved them. I could see him in the morning coming back from feeding his chickens and his rabbits with his best polo shirt on, covered in straw and various excrement from all the different animals that he had cuddled and held on to that day. He would storm into the kitchen with some story about what happened over the nighttime, what one of the rabbits did or one of his chickens did. He had this extraordinary, extraordinary interest in the lives of other beings of other creatures. And while he was a hunter, and while he hunted all over the world, and while he wore his Jaeger jacket, his German hunting jacket, into many, many sophisticated audiences, Balgeist never, ever failed to convey the empathy and the love that he had for wildlife. He was a man consumed in the moment, he was a man who believed in people. He was a man gifted in his intellectual capacity. But his heart and his desire to be kind, to greet you with a massive hug, to smile at you across a table, to give credit to his competitors as well as those who believed in his ideas, and to be satisfied, as he often said to me, Shane, the only thing I really want in life 
is to be an honest scientist and to do the very best I can for the conservation of wildlife. He was an extraordinary man, ladies and gentlemen, and you are lucky in some ways that you did not know him as well as I did, for you will not feel the burden of loss that I feel, and you will not wish so hard for the days that might have been. His mark on North American conservation is indelible, and as I became close and began to value him more and more as a friend, he taught me that to care for people is to care for wildlife and, their, and the ideas of people. To walk with him in nature was a magnificent exploration of how the intricacies of the national world worked. Like few others, I knew Dr. Valerius Geist extremely well. I consider having known him to have been one of the true blessings of my life and career. And like all forces of nature, this extraordinary man leaves behind in his wake a rich field for us to plow, great adventures for us to undertake, and hopefully great achievements to make for the wild others of this planet and hunting itself in, the, in our countries and around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Valerius Geist is dead, and we will never share the conversations with him again, but he has left you something absolutely priceless. And I hope to God that each and every one of you appreciates what he did because without him, much of what we have, we wouldn't. Thank you all very much.